Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mount Carmel area Red Tornado Football. This is Bob Els along with Warren Altimore and Wayne Brokenshire bringing you tonight's game from the Silver Bowl in Mount Carmel. The Red Tornadoes host the Lion Mountain Eagles and right now introductions taking place on the field. Uh, individual introductions. They introduced Lion Mountain. We're looking now at Number 80, Chris Cuff for the Red Tornadoes. 72, Jamie Vokler. 71, Dan Daukas at center. 75, Jonathan Els. At right guard, number 58, Mike Sinkovich. At right tackle, number 60, Jason Malakoski. Split in, number 21, Matt Montgomery. Good field work from the WKMC crew, and we had to jump in on this quick with the uh, introductions, Warren. Number five at quarterback, Nick Sebus. At the tailback, number 28, Al Bailey. Fullback, number 47, Steve Sinkovich. Slide back is number 25, Jonathan Veach. And here's the rest of the Mount Carmel Area High School Red Tornadoes. They're ranked number one in the district right now coming into this game. And Line Mountain ranked number four, the Line Mountain Eagles. So hi guys, we're here. We got the introductions underway and uh, we're ready to start the road to Altoona. That's right, this is where it begins. Same as it has in previous years, it's, it's, a, it's a familiar road for us. Uh, we, we meet a new team in the district for the first time ever, our first ever football meeting between the Line Mountain Eagles and the Red Tornadoes. Of course, uh, the Eagles are kind of a neighboring team. They come out of, out of uh, I guess, down by Dalmatia area, out of where they come from, down below Trevor and, and places like that is where Line Mountain is. Uh, so they're not that far away from us, although we have never seen them. They, they, are, they are playing in, in the uh, Twin Valley Football League. Uh, and the Tri-Valley Football League is their or league affiliation, but they are a District 4 AA football team, and they have in recent years been making a lot of noise on the field. They're, they're a good program. They have a storied history uh, storied history among themselves. Uh, if, you, if you follow the news item, and of course, you know, on a Saturday morning, you'll read where Tri-Valley played and won many times. They've had some great coaches there. They have, uh, a coach there, Darwin Marquette, who has gotten this team playing. They're, they're a big football team. You can see their captains coming out there. They're not a small group by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but they've won eight in a row. They opened a the season with two losses to two uh, very good football teams, Southern the top seed in their, in their district, and Tri-Valley also playing in their district right now in, in single A. So two good football teams, and uh, they, they right it themselves after that and reeled off eight straight wins to put them as the fourth seed in District 4. So you're going to see a pretty good football team tonight. Now, they, their offense is, is a lot, Wayne, like ours. They're going to throw the ball. Uh, there, there are many different formations. They may go no back. They may do all kinds of things, a lot like us in the offensive side of the ball. So it's going to be real interesting, and they're going to put a real test, I think, for our defense tonight. Yeah, they do some no-huddle stuff, too. That can happen tonight, Wayne. Well, we've seen that uh, no-huddle uh, a few years ago. Uh, so with Whitey being here, so we should be able to handle that. Uh, looking at their offense, their their uh, quarterback uh, again, uh, passing in the passing department has a, approximately uh, uh, 10 to 12 touchdown passes. Uh, receivers one or two is his main running back, uh, picking up uh, I would say around a thousand yards. Nobody that. Uh, you know, looking at their schedule, there's there's nobody on this on this field that can compare to anybody uh, on the other side of the offensive line uh, for Mount Carmel. Uh, you know, again, we're coming in. Everybody's full strength for Mount Carmel that I know of. Uh, we're looking at uh, you know Veach and and uh, uh, Bailey coming in with with their speed. Uh, fullback spot last week. Uh, Steve Sinkovich, who, who had an outstanding uh, game picking up, especially in the fourth quarter, uh, tons of yardage on every carry. This is it. The opening of District 4 AA semifinal action. 58, Steve Sinkovich with the kick. Kick will be taken by number seven, Adam Straub, on about the nine yard line. Brings it up to the 25, finds running room, and breaks free to the 35 yard line. Nice run by Straub that time. Tackle made by number eight, Mike Smith. Also number 26, uh, 
Lantini in on the tackle. First down, Eagles from about the 36-yard line. Nice run back, Warren. Yeah, and again, that's indicative of what you're going to be watching. They're, they're a good, fast team. A lot of players like we have. The offense, believe me, is going to mirror our offense all night. And here, here you can see the opening with a trips right formation. Wenrick at quarterback, and Brian Henninger is at the tailback position. Usually throws to the middle man on trips. Tries Henninger up the middle. He's hit hard by number 32, Rusty Lashinsky, and 54, Jeff Evans. Gain of about one yard, second down, nine yards to go. And again, you see uh, every team this year in their first series of downs always tries the strength of our defense, and, and definitely that is up the middle of, of the gut of our defensive line with uh, Evans in there, Malakowski, and, and Sinkovic. Here's one, trips left to the short side of the field, Warren. You almost can't fit everybody in there. Wenrick looks it over. He, he is allowed to audible. He has many audibles from these formations. Calls the audible, looks at a short man, cutting across the middle. Nice play, football, recovered by the Red Tornadoes. It was complete to number 86, Doug Daniels, recovered by number 35, Brian Detry. Hit made by number 32, Rusty Lashinsky. First down, Red Tornadoes. And this is one thing Coach Markwood did not want to happen. He wanted good ball control from his Eagles. Well, that was that was a really nice pass play. You're going to see that again. Unfortunately, the ball carrier took a the receiver took a whack right as he caught it and he coughed the ball up. Wide open middle. Bailey slips on the takeoff, and that only gets him to the 41 yard line. But the the middle of that line mountain defense very similar to what we saw at Sealands Grove last week, Wayne. Oh well, the defense last week, as as we saw, was running 4-4. They jump into a uh, from a 4-4, they jump into a five-man line, depending on where the power was, where the short side of the field was. And uh, it sort of looks like Lime Mountain had looked at the films last week, both offensively and defensively. Well, they line up right in the gap between the center and the guard. Montgomery and Bailey go in motion for the Red Tornadoes. No backs in the backfield. Lots of time for Sebus. Now he gets a big rush, and he starts running with the ball. Looks downfield, incomplete. Third down and about seven yards to go. Lots of time initially, Warren, for for Sebus. Absolutely. Uh, this this is a case where, where where you're seeing two offenses now. When you have two offenses that, that mirror each other, obviously the defenses are, are pretty uh, familiar with them. Right. So <laughs> you, you're going to have some initial feeling out here of, of a defense and to see which way they're playing what formation to try to understand how we're going to counteract that. Sinkovic now the lone back. And the blitz, fake to Sinkovic, gives the ball to Veach. First down at about the 34-yard line, it looks like. Well, one thing one thing we saw here and right there in that play, third down, is last week, if uh, you watched the show on Wednesday night, where you saw Sealings Grove do time and time again, brought the two linebackers up, and they were blitzing them, and it, and it did give us some havoc. It, it gave us some problems through the game until we picked up in the uh, third quarter Either they tired out or we picked up a, a good blocking scheme to uh, block those uh, blitzing linebackers. Uh, in this case here, which is, they only blitzed one. It was on the left-hand side. We ran to our left, First which would down. be defensive right. First down for the Red Tornadoes at the 35-yard line. 10-28 left in the ball game. Lion Mountain opened with the fumble, and uh, Mount Carmel area trying to capitalize on the fumble. Now, one thing that if you take a look at, watch their defense, their defensive linebackers are five yards off the line of scrimmage. They're giving us some room here to run and block. Veach goes in motion. Sinkovic right off the right side, up the middle, gain of about four or five yards. With the linebackers there, that's what's going to happen, right, guys? Right. It, you, you know, that, that, the handoff, that, that quick dive is going to pick you up automatic five yards. You get through that line with the strength that Sikovic has and the quick initial speed that he has. He's very difficult to bring down, as we saw last week and all season long. Uh, and he's just, going to, he's just going to pick up yardage if they continue to play where they're at. This one goes to Bailey. Off the left side and gain of about three or four yards. So Mount Carmel face with a third down and two yards to go. That time, that time 78 played great. Jason Yeager, he was right in position. He shed the block. Well, he took Bailey to on, but Bailey carried him for four yards anyway. So he was at the initial attack, but he wasn't able to bring Bailey down. Actually moved back, Warren, though. It's a, it's a third down and four now for the Red Tornadoes. 
So I missed something there. He, he looked like he had gone <laughs> through the line a lot farther than that. Sebas fakes to Sinkovic on the option play. Read very nicely by the initially by number 55 from Lion Mountain, who made a great play, which is Josh Daniels. Now this this is you bring up here fourth and four, and this is the difference that you're going to see in, in the, rather than some high school football teams. We automatically decide we're going for right. it. We're, we never considered punting the ball and pinning them deep in, in their own end. We're going to go for it with four yards to go. The ball sitting on the line mountain 29-yard line. Red Tornadoes go out of the shotgun formation. Sebas in shotgun. Snaps back, looking downfield. Has Veach breaking out there through his hands at the 20-yard line, and the Eagles hold. First down and 10 line mountain from about the 35-yard line. Good play. It, it, that was an excellent play. Uh, you take a look at Veach running towards the sidelines and, and Are you there, Wayne? Yeah, I'm there, okay. I guess. But what was nice about that pass play is that uh, Sebus had laid it out that there was no way the defender could even intercept right. the ball. Either Absolutely. it was going to be caught and out of bounds or it was going to be an incomplete pass. Wenrick going out of the shotgun formation. Trips let right for Line Mountain right now. Wenrick, the lone back, he puts a man in motion, hands off, he's going to run to that side, get some great blocking out there, and gains about nine yards. That was an extremely nice play because they stretched our defense out and ran with the ball. Good play by the Eagles that time. Now, that, <clears throat> you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing Line Mountain now try a lot of different things now. That, that end around off a shotgun formation, that's something you don't see very often. You don't see very often against Mount Carmel area because of defensive end play. Right. So I, I would say that in that situation, I don't think the defense was set and ready to actually play. They, they, they snapped the ball, and we were still kind of moving around. Second down, one yard to go. Enric up, checking the Red Tornado defense out, and what he will do, he can make changes on the line. Now, if he should have made a delay change of game. quicker yep. that time. Yep, he had the delay of game that time. So that will move Lion Mountain back five yards. That's the problem when you're audibling on the line in high school. There's no clock. You, right. you don't know how much time is left on that on that clock before the play has to be run. Now, they, they were talking about that uh, umpire holding his hand up and letting you know when you were getting close, but I have not seen much of that throughout the year this year. We're having a little video problem here, but we'll solve it. Second down and about six yards to go. Wenrick from back under center. He's going to roll to his left, looks downfield, overthrows his receiver number 27, Tressler, at about the 45-yard line. Again, forcing coverage by the linebackers, though, Warren, yeah. and they're, they're actually trying a lot of things to put one-on-one -on -one coverage with our linebackers. Well, the difference, the difference with Lion Mountain compared to the other passing teams that we've seen, teams that are our so-called passing teams this year, is that we haven't, they don't have that dominating real tall receiver. Right. Yeah, they got good receivers and quick receivers, but none of them are real tall like we had seen against with North Schuylkill and Marion and uh, uh, Shikalimi also had the same type of receiver. Wenrick on the option play, fumble on the play, and looks like it's recovered by Lion Mountain. It'll be fourth down. A punt situation for the Eagles. Well, their, their quarterback never realized how quick Cuff was. Cuff released so quick and came in. As soon as the, the quarterback was supposed to read him all the way, and as soon as the quarterback turned his head, Cuff was on top of him. And, of course, the pitch was not a very good pitch for the halfback. Kirby Snyder in punt formation for the Eagles. Gets it away. A sl it's a bouncer. It's a poor kick. Hits on the 48-yard line and bounces to the 47. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes from the 47-yard line. Not the best of kicks for Line Mountain. And certainly Mount Carmel area, at least here in the, in the beginnings of the first period, have enjoyed extremely good field position. Well, what we even noticed last, last week against Sealings Grove is that they are not intending to kick to Montgomery because of the great uh, specialty team that he has uh, been playing in the last few weeks. The wind blowing Warren from uh, left to right on our screen, too. Hands the ball to Sinkovic up the middle to about the 46-yard line, and I think they have to keep that play up, Wayne, just to just to keep this uh, defensive line mountain honest, pull well, them up. Well, you know, 
if you don't pull them up, the other thing that's going to do is all you need to do is get through the line and shield the linebackers, and your halfbacks are now, you know, a first down if not further. I mean, that's that's the only thing that these that those linebackers being back that far is going to do. They're inching up. They're inching up a little. Let's try the blitz. Gets it to Bailey, and Bailey gains about maybe two yards. Uh, so we'll be faced with a third down and one yard to go. <clears throat> they blitz a lot for, for early in the game. And that may be a way of compensating for the, way the defensive lineup the way it is. Now, obviously, they're comfortable playing their linebackers in that position. I think they saw it work for Sealands Grove last mm. week. That Sealands Grove did it almost every play, didn't right. they, Wayne? There they come again. They're inching up, and they look like they're going to come. They give it to Sinkovich up the middle. He's stuffed. He's stuffed, and it'll be for a loss. They will not get a first down on this play. Interesting call here. That yeah, was. Fourth down and about one yard to go. The ball's on the 43-yard line. They're going to measure it, but it looks to be about maybe six inches short, Warren. And we, again, show absolutely no thought about punting. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to try to get to pick the first down up. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, Warren. It, last week, there was a big improvement in the punting game. Mm -hmm. The center uh, uh, coming back was much faster, crisper, uh, right back to Steve, and Steve had more than enough time to punt. And, and I'll tell you what, all night long, he did an excellent job in punting. Fourth down and inches for the Red Tornadoes, and if they line up in that formation, this quarterback sneak will work. There it is, first down, Red Tornadoes, Sebus behind Jonathan Elson. That's going to go every time yeah. for that short yard. I got to definitely question the defensive formation right. on a short They didn't yard put anybody play. on the center. But, well, but I don't know what we're doing there. Well, you know, the, the last two plays, uh, the last time we went for the first down also was a straight dive to Sinkovich, either off guard on either side. Uh, apparently, it looked like that's where they were trying to gap was yeah. at the guard Trying position. to get the gap to not yes, look for the quarterback snake. That's right. The referees have a problem right now. I don't know if it's with the clock or what. I'm not sure who they're talking to right there, are well, you? Well, they're talking to the coaches up here. I guess they want uh, one of these, one of our coaches to come over. And... Okay, we're gonna let we're gonna let Wayne crash his microphone and go do that. All right, Warren, we're back. You and I are here. <laughs> Wayne's in there fixing yeah, the Yeah, they get us to do everything, don't they? <clears throat> First down, red tornadoes from the 41-yard line. There's the big hole in the middle again. Gives it to Sinkovich off the left side, five yards, and the red tornadoes are just going to have to be content with what line Mountain's given them right there, Warren. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think this is going to be an adjustment sooner or later. Now, Mount Carmel area in the, in the first two series that they had the ball didn't seem intent on running the ball much. They tried a couple of runs, but they were also trying to pass the ball. Here, it looks like they're going to say to Line Mountain, okay, line up that way. We'll give you the short yardage, four or five yard run game and see what you can do. Now, we're going to try outside. Oh, Bailey, fine. Nope. Collapses in because the outside linebackers are. Are, and the inside linebackers are both staying outside, Wayne. You do not have, they're out there. They're going to make that play. Good play by number 57, uh, Nick Wiest on the tackle, and, and uh, extremely good defense there on the outside. Yeah, very quick. It, it, from here, where I was standing, looked like it looked Bailey exactly, had the hole, right? He had the hole, and it was opening up and coming through, and uh, it was just the one, number 57, and made a good play. Now they've gone into a, a little different formation here on third down and short. Gets the ball to Veach, catches it, and gets the first down and more. Veach on his feet and down to the eight-yard line. Good play. Great call by Whitey Williams. 
did a little screen out there with a one blocker, and it worked very well, Warren. Well, Veach did, Veach did a couple of good things, too. You had Sebus make a pass when they came low. Veach was very careful not to let his, his knee touch, and he came close to it. <laughs> right. Then he picked the ball up, and instead of jumping up and making a move, he had, a, he had the blocker right in front of him, but the blocker hadn't made the block yet. He tippy-toed a little bit and waited, and then once he broke around the end, you see why Jonathan Veach has talked about so much in football circles. That speed is blinding when he gets around the corner. Power backfield for the Red Tornadoes. And a handoff to Bailey behind the power and gets down to about the two-yard line. That's what you're looking for, though. You need those four or five yards on that play, Wayne. Well, to take a look at, at the line on that side. I mean, they're already they're all the way down. You got Cuffy over there. You got uh, Jamie Volkler uh, was all the way down on the three-yard line with, uh, with Bailey. Uh, you got uh, Sinkovich all the way down there. I mean, they just blew Lane Mountain right off the ball. And that is some syllables to Jonathan. Actually, actually right now, Malakoski's in the backfield and Mike Ravito in at right tackle. Behind Ravito on that side, touchdown, Red Tornadoes. They bowl it in. Uh, Jonathan Veach around the right side, and that showed a little bit of the Veach speed right there, didn't it? Well, they... They sealed everybody in, in, in 78 in Line Mountain here. Let me quickly grab his number. Jaeger, Jaeger took a nice hit. Now he's hurt a little bit out there right now, but he turned into the play as they were sealing it. And, and you can't seal it any better. There was no one going to make the play there. Mike Sinkovich in to attempt the extra point for the Red Tornadoes. Sets his shoe, has to get that fixed, which we've seen throughout the year. Snaps back, it's down, the kick's up. And no good, off to the left side. Everything looked pretty good except the hooks It's amazing. <laughs> Although he definitely, had, he definitely had length on that one. <laughs> With 2.40 left in the first quarter, the score, the Red Tornado six. The Eagles from Lion Mountain, nothing. A great drive by the Red Tornadoes. Put a lot of pressure right up the middle. Had to convert a fourth down and inches situation mm -hmm. to get it. And did it finished off with a, a, a real nice run by Veach around the right side. And, and most of it on the ground. And I think that's going to be the key to the football game from here on in. If Mount Carmel area is content with running the ball where we saw them do in the last drive, I don't think Lyme Mountain is going to win the football game. Right. Lyme Mountain is going to have to change that defense and tighten it up against the run a little bit. Not a whole lot, but they need to come up because they're trying to compensate for that gap by blitzing a linebacker, bringing him onto the line and shooting the gap. But many times, that's going to only get you in trouble. If the play goes the other way from you, you take yourself out of the play automatically, and if the play is coming right at you, a lot of times you get blocked right at the point all the time. So it's, it's a difficult defense to execute, and I'm not saying Line Mountain can't. I mean, that's going to remain to be seen as the game progresses. Kicks down the middle of the field. 27? 27. 27, the ball carrier for Lion Mountain. Tressler and tackled by 58, Sinkovich, 28, Bailey, 26, Lantini, 27, Matt Van Dorn. Matt Van Dorn, and number 21. He, and, and again, we watched him last Matt week. Matt Montgomery. Matt Montgomery, is he, he was coming down and, and containing to the outside. He's bringing everything back to the inside, and he got all the way down to about the 35-yard line. He was actually just standing there waiting for the uh, ball carrier to come his way, and then he went in and made the tackle. First down line mountain from the 32-yard line. Todd Wenrick, junior quarterback, sets a power backfield for line mount. We haven't seen this tonight yet from the Eagles. Pitches back. Going to try Trassler. Nice. He's just nailed Lashinsky. for about a three-yard loss. That was Lashinsky yeah, right there. 32, Rusty Lashinsky. I mean, right, I, I'll tell you why. You watched the game last week, and, and uh, congratulations again to uh, Rusty Lashinsky on the uh, Mike Terry Award and Steve Sinkovich, but uh, he did the exact same thing last week. He, he filled the holes when he needed to fill them. That time, he, he just he didn't just fill the hole. He, he came into the backfield <laughs> and made the tackle. Uh, yeah. Three-yard three three loss. To do. Yeah. Second down, 13 yards to go. Fakes the pitch to Tressler. Cuff Ooh. after Wenrick almost had him. Kalinowski should have had the interception in and out of his hands, but a great play by John Kalinowski. Yeah, that, that play was a disaster from the start. Cuffy came off the block way too quick. He <laughs> drove the quarterback into, in, into a backward uh, arc 
And then when he finally let the ball go, which he should not have done, he, he all but threw it to, to Kalinowski. So, again, Cuffey would get credit for that whole play there. Third down and long for Lion Mountain. Trips right. Tressler split far or to the left, the short side of the field. Henninger in the backfield along with Wenrick. Wenrick the pass. Oh, and Sinkovich is tackled. Good coverage by Sebus. He gave Oh, it to he him. caught the ball at the 42-yard line. Mike Sinkovich was tackled going through the line of scrimmage, Warren. And that was that was a defense we had not seen much of. You'd see what we were doing on that on the oh, line. Yeah. Well, everybody Did shifted see? the gaps. Every yeah. They got through. He got through. Yeah. But but the the guard tackled him. The but guard the, tackled him. The, the thing I think what Warren's pointing out is we overloaded the one side right. of the offensive line and, and came through. And it was a great move. It was a great play, and it yeah. worked. Yeah, that was that's an interesting little wrinkle you saw from yeah. Big Red on that play. Wenrick checks out the Red Tornado defense. They have the ball. Again. First down and 10 from the 43. Quick pass. And number 14 in and out of his hands, Kratzer, Josh Kratzer, but he was going to be annihilated by <laughs> Stevenson COVID. So. Yeah. Again, that, that trips play that they're running, that's the several times they run a trips and thrown into it, and always to the guy, to the, to the short guy. You know, that, that they haven't gone long on that trip. So usually on a trips, when you have a trips like that, the three receivers, one's going short, one's going medium, one's going long. And, and what you have is you have a crisscross pattern there someplace because right. you're trying to clear a zone you're, out. You're trying to free somebody up during that, during that yeah. pattern. Wenrick tries it right off tackle. Good play by 71, Dalkus. He was rushing the quarterback but made a great tackle there. Well, that was that was a design. That was a, That was a call play right there. If you take a look at the defense, and we've seen that all the way back here on about the 35-yard line, is Sinkovich's is lining up right next to Evans in the gap, and that's leaving the tackle open to come out on the end. <clears throat> and what they what they tried to do that time is tried to kick behind uh, Sinkovich and pick up that that yardage. Third down, mm -hmm. five yards to go. Wenrick rolls to his right. Looks at the short man. Tried to hit him again, but good coverage by 47, Steve Zinkovich. I'm not sure Kratzer could have caught that. It was a little bit in front of him, Warren. Yeah. They, they, they're not executing all that well in the passing game, but what they, what they do show you is a pretty sophisticated passing game right now. If they start to click there, they can be a real dangerous team when, when they start throwing the ball around. They, ha they have a nice way that they run those trips formations and, and they're freeing a guy up and they're isolating the linebacker, as Bob had mentioned Th This earlier. is a fake punt because they don't have their punter, and I hope we've caught it. Adam Straub, oh, no, he's going to kick it. He's their short <laughs> kicker. Okay. It's not their punter. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. it isn't. Yeah, me all, I know, you, I know it, it isn't. And, and you saw what he did. Get me all excited. Up. <laughs> and you were still talking. He kicked it. I thought, oh. I know. Well, if you look, Kirby <laughs> Snyder punted the first time. Right. Did a good punt. Oh, you're right. I'm not. And I'm they not. brought this little guy in the punt. I thought that yeah. didn't look like it's going to be a punt. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Take a look where he punted it, too. It wasn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it turned out not to be a punt when you see how far it went. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I what won't they were call doing any there. more plays than I. <laughs> I was just wondering how far you were going to go because he kicked it so quick. I was trying to see his name. Did you see that? <laughs> First down and ten. Red Tornadoes. Tricing Kovic up the middle, and there's a fumble on the play. Fumble on the play. We'll see who recovers it here. Big Recovered red. by the Red Tornadoes. Two tenths of a second left in the first quarter. Well, I tell you what, I, I don't know who came in there. I think it was number four, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, excellent play on his part. Steve Sinkovich didn't even have the ball, and he made the hit already. That's the end of the first quarter. The score, Red Tornado 6, the Lion Mountain Eagles, nothing. And ladies and gentlemen, remind you, this is WKMC-TV, broadcasting to you over a microwave signal, WLX267. We are an instructional fixed television service. You're catching us every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock during the football season on channel 13 of the Service Electric Cable System. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are live at 7.30 a.m. in the morning, channel 13, Service Electric Cable System. You can catch Mount Carmel Area's broadcasting arm, WKMC-TV, doing a live broadcast to start the morning off at the high school. You know what? There's a lot of people just coming into the game. I think they thought it was a 730, 730 game. Yeah. Threw, threw everybody I see off. a lot of extra people just walking in through the gates right now. Why do they change it, I wonder? 
Why does it change to seven? I guess district four. All the district games are at seven. They oh. they pick the district games for seven o'clock. Red Tornado's ready to come out here. Second down, 12 yards to go. They're on the 32-yard line. Nope, they're back on about the 28-yard line. Pitch back to Bailey. Going to try it outside. Al turns on some speed and gains about maybe seven yards. Gets it to about the 47-yard line. That was a nice run that time by Bailey. It really was. Uh, he knows exactly when to turn that last af afterburner on. And just when you think he's nailed, he, he skirts past somebody. Third down, six yards to go. Josh Paracel into the game for the Red Tornadoes. Sebas rolls. It's going to be a run all the way. And Red, great read by number, was it 80. 10? 80. 80, number 80 in on the tackle, which is Matt Marqu Marquette. Now, that, that's a play we should look at a little bit later on. Now, he's the cornerback that's taking care of the, uh, the whole uh, sideline here. Now, with Sebus on a boot like that time, because they went for the fake for Steve Sinkovich, and, and, and Sebus was open coming this way. He automatically released as soon as he saw a run. Steve Sinkovich in punt formation. An end over end kick bounces on about the 40 and rolls to the 38 yard line. First down and 10, Lion Mountain Eagles. 10.35 left in the first half. It looks like he, looks like he had a hard time with that kick. Did you see yeah, him at the end there? Looks, something was wrong there the way, the way he, was, he was at the end of it. I don't know where they caught him too far out on his foot. Yeah, he, he, just looked, he just looked like he was having a heck of a time yeah. there at the at the very end of the punt for yeah. some reason. A pretty good breeze blowing from left to right on your TV mm -hmm. screens tonight. Wenrick now first time that he'll have the wind at his back. Trips right for Line Mountain. Tries it off tackle. Good run by 28. The ball carrier, Brian Henninger, great block on the right side there to, to spring him through, Warren. Yeah, that's a nice play that time because they caught us in the, in the defense that was not set up for it. All he has to do is isolate one guy because he gets the ball so quickly, and he did. And then uh, they expect him to, to run into that linebacker, and that time he gained some yardage doing it. See how close they line Henninger up to Wenrick, too. He is only a yard back, Wayne, from where the... Uh, the Line Mountain Eagles are. Tries it to him again and goes for yeah. about a one half yard gain. Malakoski in there quick, also with 54 Jeff Evans. Well, the problem with that is, Wayne, I know you're probably heading there, is one thing, one thing is you don't, he doesn't get a look at the hole. Right. I mean, he's gonna go one spot and that's it. He can't decide to turn or to cut. He has to go to the hole where it's at. And that, that play there was a prime example. You look at the defense on this side with uh, Cuff and Malakoski and Evans, blowing the offensive line back one yard. And that's all they have to do is take them back one yard off the ball, and that runner is running into them. No backs. No backs. Trips right. Not going like out us. of the shotgun formation. Looks a lot like us sometimes, don't they? <laughs> yep. Puts a man in motion again to the short side. Now he's going to come to the short side. Hit by Malakoski in the backfield, but that's a first down at the 50-yard line. Nice play, a good run by Caton Tressler. That's the second time they've run that play uh, with successfully, and this time picking up a first down. But it's the exact play we saw earlier. Well, again, you know, it's, it's the type of offense that you're running. It's trips right and split on the other side, and you're spreading your defense out, and that's exactly what they want to do. And they're spread out again, same formation. Wenrick stays in the shotgun, 9.07 left in the first half. Puts Tressler in motion. Now he sends Tressler out for a pass. Oh. Intercepted by Nick Sebas. And guess what? This is a touchdown, folks. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Great job by Nick. Yeah, Boy, did he sneak in and grab that one, didn't he, Wayne? Oh, I'll tell you what. I don't. I, I, Nick read that the whole way. Yeah, I mean, there's no way he was looking at the defender on that. He read that. That ball was right. At, you thought that was thrown to Nick, yeah. the way Nick was running. Reminiscent of Evans' interception against Tyrone. That's the right. Same kind of, the same kind of defensive exactly. play that time. Coach Williams will go for two here, uh, most likely. 
That's, that's got to take the wind out of the Eagles' sails a little bit there. One of the things I know that the Eagles knew they couldn't do was fall behind early and fall behind with any kind of points, like, you know, two or three right. touchdowns. Or the game, quite frankly, is over for them. They can't. They got to stay close. They got to stay in this game. And if they do, and even their coach had talked about it in the, in the, in the press, if they can stay close at the end, he's confident that it's a football game. And I'm, I'm going to give them that because I think they're, they're that talented that it will be. But if they start being blown out here and give up a couple of scores early, they're going to be in for a long evening, I'm afraid. Sebas fakes the handoff to Sinkovich, looks in the corner of the end zone, and Cuff, nope. Yeah, yeah Cuff. Yep, Chris Cuff, Cuff, good for two. Great throw. Nice throw by Sebas to Cuff. 14 to nothing, Red Tornadoes in the lead. Cuffy was, he broke back behind the defense, and the cornerman never even saw him back there on the end zone line. And, uh, you know, Nick Sebas, thank goodness, uh, did see him and, and made the reception. 8.51 left in the first half. The score, Red Tornadoes 14, Lion Mountain Eagles nothing. Now some, some big defensive plays, which is apropos for us. That's pretty much what we do in every game sooner right. or later. And, and so far the offense a little inconsistent, and they're up against a pretty good defense right now. Lion Mountain's defense, the, the, the trouble they give you here is that it's difficult for the linemen to understand who it is they're going to block because they're not staying in one position. They're moving around, and you're seeing that guy creep up to the to the line ready to blitz and all. It makes it more difficult, yet it takes a while to learn what to do there. Oh, Sinkovich Ooh. booms one. Hits 27, Tressler at about the nine-yard line, breaks it out, and now up the middle of the field. Good open field tackle by 27, Matt Van Doren. Yeah, nice play by Van Doren that time again. and. and Every time there's a special teams play, Van Doren's name, Lentini's name, yep. the same names always. I mean, they are absolutely fabulous on special teams. First and 10 Eagles from the 28-yard line. Wenrick sets up with that full house backfield. Tressler gets the ball, and he's nailed for about a one-yard loss, most likely under there, 70, well, 77. Chris Cuff was in there along with Sinkovich, Evans. Sinkovich, Sinkovich and, Evans, and Evans, right. 47, Steve Sinkovich and Jeff Evans. Mr. Dog. Mr. Dog. <laughs> Second down, nine yards to go. Fakes the Tressler, now he's going to throw. Hit number 80 on the sidelines, which was Matt Marquette, and is it first down? First yeah. down. First down, Line Mountain. Nice catch. Right that was just a great time. catch. Yeah, that nice was catch a great catch. Uh, you get, and you get, I'll tell you what, you credit Line Mountain there. They, they come out throwing, you know, and, and throwing to the same side. So yeah, I give them credit there. They didn't, they didn't shy away from that after being burned. They're coming right back at us. Well, and they're throwing out of a, a very tight formation there. There's only one receiver yeah. on that play. Wenrick with Tressler at that tailback there again. Going to give it to Tressler. Gains about two or three yards. 71, Daukas with the initial hit. That's just an odd, odd formation wing. We don't, we don't see that the way they run their offense with the, with the, the back so close well, like that. Yeah, the power often. backs. No, you don't. We, we see the power running like the, that they are running. Oh, now they're coming out in the, in the trips again yep. to spread everybody well, out. They're changing it around. They, right. That leaves Henninger the lone back, though, for the Line Mountain Eagles. Wenrick, back to pass. Rush from Malakoski, made him force the throw, Flag. and flags on the play. That's going to go against Big Red that, defensive interference. It uh, may be holding because hold, well, it, it, it just didn't look well. Uh, the only reason I said that was I didn't think the ball was there to, for them to even call interference. Yeah, they had the receiver. They had the receiver turning somehow. Either they either they caught his arm or whatever. Well, they're calling interference. But they they turned him around a little bit there. So that's going to bring up a first down for the Eagles that time. Quarterback took a good hit from uh, Cuff, I yeah, believe. Cuff, I believe, yeah. at the end of the play there. That's what I was watching. I had Malakoski, but I didn't know one of them. One of them broke through there. 
And it's their normal. Now they're going no huddle. Now Line Mountain goes no huddle. First down and 10 from the 44-yard line. 6.48 left in the first half. When recalling the play right from his quarterback position. Just throws a fly pattern out there, and five, Nick Sebus reads it all the way, goes yeah. right along with Tressler. No chance to complete it against Sebus that time. He had great position. The ball carrier was out of position and was not going to be able to come back to the ball. And that's one person that you don't want to throw the fly, you know, that, that throw and run underneath it is against Nick Sebus. Corner pattern, of, right? Yeah, a corner pattern with, with the speed that he has. You know, he can, he can run down and catch it just as good as the receiver can. Trips right, Tressler to the left side for the Eagles. Henninger, the lone back. Wenrick puts Henninger in motion. So that, that's going to be a flag. Big rush from Malakoski. Good catch made by number six, Burke. But this one should be coming back yeah. because I think yeah. 28 started upfield too soon. Yeah, it's going to come back, unfortunately. Nice play, though, by line mound. But uh, the penalty will negate it, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you gotta give you gotta give the Eagles though. They they are an exciting offense. Yes, they oh, are. Oh yeah, definitely. They like to watch an offense like they've got. They they're running out of multiple formations, multiple different kind of sets, and uh, and it's just fun to watch. And I mean, they've run it for many years. Defensing it is not probably fun, but if you're a fan of football and you're just watching this game, Line Mountain is a very good offensive team. Six thirty left in the first half. Puts the ball on the 47 yard line in Mount Carmel territory. Second down, 15 yards to go. Trips right. Quick drop back by Wenrick. Looks over the middle. And in and out of the hands of number six, Jason Burke, but he was open there for a second, Warren. He was. Well, I mean, they, they do all the right things. So they're flooding zones with a trips right formation. They throw one guy to the other side. He's always along the sideline on the short side. And that spreads you as far as you can get spread. The quarterback then takes about four quick steps. He turns and he throws. And he's, he doesn't fool around with the ball. And he's there. I mean, you know, that's in the, in the vicinity of the yeah. receiver in their hands. And they're, they're all catchable, every yeah. one of these passes. He, he's a difficult kid to sack. He really is because he turns and he throws really well. Third down, 15 yards to go. Timeout called by the Eagles. And with this timeout, you can give us our TV crew here, Warren. All right, we got, of course, the program director, my main man, Joe Novotny. On camera up here in the booth with us is Joe Mays. We have Gary Tresker, Tara Goodlunas, Brent Fisher. Cable grips are Ryan Devine and Dave Ginther. The coach's VCR is Joe D'Amico. And, of course, His Highness, George McPhee, running this whole operation as he always has. And I believe always will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he will always be here somehow. I don't know how it is with him. But, uh, you know, we don't say enough of good things about George McPhee. We, we kid about him, and he is, he's great like that. He's, he's able to be kidded with all the time. We have such a good time with him. But if you could understand the kind of time and effort and that the he, technical expertise that he's thrown into this operation every day of his that's life. That's right. Well, you go back, just you go back to George uh, and Mr. Joe Swatsky, you know, 25, 30 years ago, uh, up in a little storeroom, no bigger than where we're standing right now right. in Jeffco's, right. uh, you know, producing the, the first TV show for the high school. Yeah, it's, it's truly a tribute to him. We just don't get a chance to say how much we appreciate what he's done that often. Third down, 15 yards to go. Wenrick out of the shotgun formation. He rolls to his right side, rush from... Oh, nice catch made by number 86 on the reception, Doug Daniels. Tackled by 47, Sinkovich, but a nice rush by Cuff and, uh, and uh, Malakoski on the quarterback. But, boy, he is quick getting out there, Wayne. Well, I'll tell you what. It, it, his initial steps are very fast to get back five, five steps and set up to look at his receivers to, to over, overview the whole field. And he does that very, very well. The other thing that we look at, too, is the great time that his line is giving him. Even though he's yeah. being chased, he has enough time initially to look downfield. Fourth down, leaves Henninger in the backfield. Wenrick, back to pass. Now he fakes. He's going to, oh, it's a draw. 
First down at the 30-yard line, all on his own. Malakoski had him at the 35, and he snuck away from yeah. him. Good run by number eight, Wenrick. Yeah, Wenrick's a nice, a nice football player. He really is. Does a lot of little things right, and, and, and really is a sharp-looking quarterback for Line Mountain right now. I, I like the way this kid plays football. Yeah, definitely. 5-12 left on the clock. 14-0. Red Tornadoes in the lead, but the Eagles with their first mounted offensive drive taking place right here. Wenry, quick drop back. Oh, in and out of the hands of Detry at the 24-yard line. Now see, that time the receiver never turned to him. That was definitely a blown play because he threw it really quick, and of the three receivers lined up, none of them turned their head back towards him. Well, I'll tell you, that was that. I think he was actually looking at that play for the, for the first down. He actually looked towards the end. He was looking for just a quick pass because the the uh, linebackers, our, our, our defensive crew, if you take a look on his trips, are playing a little bit softer. And there's a slight gap right there that they could pick up. If you look, he was thrown between uh, uh, Detry and, and Sinkovich. Second down, 10, 451 left in the first half. Try the quarterback sneak. Hit by Lashinsky and 47 Sinkovich, but a gain of about five yards. They just blocked Jeff Evans out of the way and went for a five yard gain. Third down, five yards to go. Well, I'll tell you what, it, uh, uh, Marquardt's uh, playbook must look like ours. It mm -hmm. must be like three inches thick, mm -hmm. and they're over there leafing through it right now because I think we've seen a different play every time they yeah, come up they the were, line of scrimmage. We've seen that one to Tressler twice, but not much else different. They've been on every not, page. Everything else has been different. <laughs> Wenrick with his third down. Back to Pat. Quick pass, and Callen, oh, they're going to call a late hit on Steve that was, Sinkovich. That was a bad call. There is there, there is no way that Steve Sinkovich would have known from here that that was no, they didn't an call late hit. They called pass. interference. They didn't even call a late hit. So it was long after the ball was there. Talk a little bit about the officials that are here tonight. <laughs> okay. Marty Maurer is from Williamsport. Gene Fairfax from Williamsport. Jim Schimp from Montoursville. Dennis Reifrisch from Uliesburg. Joe Klebon from Shemokin. Ron Kennedy from Montoursville, and Paul Lockley from Harrisburg. That's a diverse group, isn't it? Yeah, it's about as diverse as, uh, you know, when you take a look at where we're playing right now, we're in District 4 playoffs, and every one of those except for the Harrisburg person came from District 4. <laughs> look at this split, guys. Look where the trips left are. They're not even on the camera. They are way out on the sideline. First down and 10 line mountain from the 14 yard line. This is a set like you don't see ever. Gonna try it up the middle, cuff with the initial tackle and stops Henninger at the 10 yard line. You know, I figured they were gonna run. You know, the way, the way oh, they yeah. were lined up and looking at each other, I thought despite that, that theatrics of sending everybody out there, that was a quick hit. Again, I, I really like this offense. I'll tell you what, we have not seen an offense like this for most of the year, I would say. No, no one a lot really to did talk this. about. You're right. Absolutely. They're, they're an entertaining football team. I'll say that for them. Second down, eight yards to go. Line Mountain can get a first down on the four yard line. 320 line 329 left in the first half. Oh, oh motion. Right. Number 56 moves on that play. Four line mountain, which is Zach Latchaw. So this one will come back five. I'll tell you what, I have to give it to Mad Dog because for the last two seasons, you get an offensive lineman moving. I haven't seen anybody get hit right. yet. You right. know, I mean, that comes from the old school. Someone moves, that's their mistake. Yeah. You're going to pay for it. You get a free. And I have to give it to Jeff. He just <laughs> he hit Jeff's that center and drove the center back. <laughs> Jeff Cash is cue ball. Yes, he did. <laughs> Second down, 13 yards to go. The ball resting on the Red Tornado 15-yard line. Full house backfield for Line Mountain, and they've been known to throw out of this formation. They pitch back to Tressler. Cuff stretches it out and drives them back to the 20-yard line. So another five-yard loss. The Red Tornado defense a little upset at the interference call a few plays ago. Well, I, and this I don't understand. If you take a look at uh, the defense for Mount Carmel all season long has defend at the full house backfield power either right or left it doesn't matter and they've done an outstanding job and and that i was an odd probably call. and it was odd an odd call. call 
all, all game long, Lime Mountain's running uh, trips and, and spreading everybody out, and they're moving the ball here. Wenrick puts Tressler in motion to the left side. He's going to throw to the left, looks over the middle. Good play by Steve Sinkovich at the 15-yard line. The uh, Eagles will be faced with a fourth down and about 12 yards to go. Well, I'll tell you what, this one's going into the end zone. They have no choice at this point. Two minutes left in the first half. Well, they're gonna try a field goal. Number 13, Josh Wenrick will attempt the 30 yard field goal. Ball will be held by Wenrick, it's back, it's down, the kick's up. And it's no good, off to the right side, the red defense holds at the 133 mark of the first half. Good defensive stand by Big Red, it really Excellent. was. Uh, they, they, they played tough. They got an interference call that, that gave them a first down, and a lot of things were happening to them out there, and they, and they came up against a, just an, an interesting offense. you got to be on your toes for this group because they're doing everything you can That's think right. of in front of you. So uh, probably the – I mean, other than, other than Marion and Southern Columbia – now, Southern Columbia, unfortunately – fortunately, <laughs> unfortunately for us, tries one up the middle to Sinkovich, goes for about two-yard loss. They're not going to fool you. I mean, no. You know what they're running. And Marion, although probably a good offensive football team, not nearly as diverse as this group. I mean, this one, this one's a true offensive unit going here. Now, defensively, we've seen uh, in this play, right, right, this previous play here, exactly what other teams have been doing. As soon as Sebus gets one person in the backfield blocking and we split trips, they, they're blitzing one of their linebackers. They bring him up in the gap, and, and he's unloading. Why do the kids look at in this team so far in the night is his number four, Locke. Right. Levi, Levi Locke. He's, he's a heck of a football player. Sebus is going to run with the ball himself. And a nice tackle made by 55 at the 15-yard line, Josh Daniels. I'll tell you what, Sebus cannot get going tonight. There are linemen right in there. And, and, uh, and if, if, if it was a pass play, he tried running with the ball, but he can't get going around that outside, Warren. I think at this point they were trying to run the clock down too, though. So, 21 seconds. Out of the eye, Sebus is gonna run bootleg himself and gains only one yard. Real nice tackle made by number seven, Adam Straub, and timeout called by Line Mountain if they have another timeout left, which they did. And they'll force the Red Tornadoes Nah, not really. They wouldn't force them to punt. You could really take this snap and run. Well, it depends on how many timeouts. I don't even know what time. How many well, there's, they have none left, but you could run around for five seconds back there. But punt situation for the Red Tornado. No, they have one left. Yeah. They, they have one left. So either, uh, you know, they have to punt. That's definite. You know, they, they have to punt the ball. Steve Sinkovich in punt formation. 21, Matt Montgomery with the long snap. They put number 27, Tressler, back in punt receiving formation. Caton Tressler, six foot, 170 pound senior. Snaps, high snap over Sinkovich's head, and this will be a safety for Lion Mountain Eagles. So now the Red Tornado's forced to kick with three seconds left on the clock, Wayne. Well, they, you know, Lime Mountain did exactly what they intended to do, put points on the board somehow, and it was calling that timeout, forcing them to, forcing Mount Carmel into a punting situation. And the ball See, just snapped over, over uh, Steve's might, head. We yeah. might be killing the clock here, but we were seriously disorganized on the That's, last offensive yes, series, we were. and now it came back and it bit us. It yeah, really did. Yeah. We were milling around there in the last part of the, of the half, and we, and we get two points put up against us because of it. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, and, and you're right, you know, we get back there, we get a little complacent, we think we're just going to run the clock out instead of keeping the intensity up and, and going out and picking up a first down so we can run the clock out. Come on, 
So what are they going to do? Kick off with, yeah, it's, it's Mike Sinkovich, number 58. He's going to go out and kick off. I see that. I don't think you've seen Mount Carmel area take two safeties in a season for as long as we can remember. <laughs> we might have set a record on that one here tonight. <laughs> Squibber kick bounces through the uh, Lion Mountain's hands. Touched by Tressler. Smitty there first and finished off by number 29, Josh Paracella. That's the end of the first half. The score, Red Tornadoes 14, Lion Mountain Eagles 2. We'll be back with some halftime stats from Jose Gonzalo in one moment. All right, we're back to start the second half and some halftime stats, courtesy of Jose Gonzalo down on the field. Absolutely, gang. Sit down and strap yourself in your chair because this is going to get ugly, okay? Mount Carmel area rushed the ball 20 times for a total of 34 yards. Passing there, one of three for 25 yards. They had a total of 59 yards in the first half. Three first downs. Individually, Sinkovich rushed the ball six for 12 times. Bailey, six for 25. Stevens, five for minus one. Veach, two for nine. Receiving the one completed pass was Veach for 25 yards. Line Mountain rushed the ball 14 times for 35 yards and passed 5 of 13 for 63 yards for a total of 98 yards in the first half and six first downs. Just step right in there. You're on and camera. One, one of the things you want to look at here, if you're going to decide how a game is going, not only by the yard, is you look at the, look at the time of possession, folks. Right. Mount Carmel had it for 8 minutes and 41 seconds. Line Mountain, 15 minutes and 19 seconds. Now, unfortunately... Pine Mountain's on the short end of a 14-2 right, score, right. but they're doing all the right things. So if they continue to do that, this is going to be one heck of a ball game right down to the wire, it looks like. And the other thing is, Coach Conley, over the years, when he gets to these final games, his defenses bend a little, give a little, but don't break. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what you saw tonight. You saw some bends. You saw some prevents. You saw some things that he didn't want to end it right there. And, and they got some first downs. But, I, I, you know, that's my own personal opinion. Yeah, so. well, I think, I think defensively, I don't think we have a problem. Obviously, right. I think offensively, we need to get on track there and show some consistency here in, in a district playoff game. And that's the one thing we're not doing right now. Captains will meet at the center of the field. They, they actually... But the, these refs have been very, very concerned about the clock, Wayne. They had 15 minutes on the clock. The both teams came out early, okay? Right. So it, it had wound down that there were three minutes on the clock. The timekeeper changed it to 12 minutes to start the third quarter. They said, no, 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 put three minutes back up there, and now everybody's just standing out here waiting for the referee's three minutes to run off the clock. So that's a first we've seen happen. and. It's running down the 47 seconds now, and uh, I mean they're being paid by the hour. I guess. <laughs> they're still watching it, and they're going to wait till it runs down to zero. That's what's going to happen here as it as it winds down. Now they. Go and they're going to discuss some things at the middle of the field. And uh, I'm starting to see where we started at seven o'clock instead of seven thirty. <laughs> I mean, there's a half an hour of fooling right. around here. The that long time. half time. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what we're, we're doing here. Now, I don't know what they call. What do you call this now? <laughs> they're still waiting. It's at three seconds. They are not going to bring these captains out to the center of the. There it is. The whistle went off after the three minutes. And now they're going to bring the captains out. So. <laughs> There they come. They're bringing them out right now. Yeah, I think I think as we look at the second half beginning here, Mount Carmel area needs to establish their offense, and they need they they seem to need this this ability to get off the ball and start knocking people down. Wayne and I were talking about it at at half a little bit. We don't seem to be to be bowling people down right now. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to take away anything from Lime Mountain's defense because they've got a fine defense. They really do, and they're playing good football out here. But it just looks like, like we're kind of a step below. The engine's not running at, at full idle right now. 
Well, and the other thing is in the, in the last few weeks, and, and it's noticeable in the last few weeks, is that we have, we've run into some defenses that uh, are a little bit smaller than we are and very, very quick. The lateral pursuit on these defenses is outstanding. Uh, especially last week uh, against Sealings Grove, their linebackers, uh, you know, blocked off the outside. They picked a contained off tackle and everything else. Uh, there's a case there where you have to get out off the ball and you, you just have to knock people over. And that's where we pick up our big yardage. Just the, the shielding and everything else is, is fine for some plays. If you get out there and you get through the line to get through, get off the linebacker, it, you know, you look for a shield block and cut off that block. But uh, you know, we had to start, you know, really putting some hits on some some uh, defensive people. Josh Wenrick will kick off for Line Mountain. Is this ball and you down? know what? They're lining up for an onside kick. Yeah, yeah. it sort of looks that way. Definitely lining up for an onside kick. And why not? They'd I mean, better bring everybody yeah, up. They've right showed now. everything else for the in the first half. There's not much they haven't done. They might as well do this. Unless it's just a high square, but we'll see. But Wenrick going to try. No, 51 is going to kick the onside kick at Cuff. Bounces around and covered by Chris Cuff. Great job by Chris Cuff to do that one. And if they were kicking anybody, probably the right guy to kick to on our part. Yeah, I mean, and again, credit to Line Mountain Eagles. They're trying it all. I mean, they're, right. they're pulling the whole book out and saying, if we're going to lose this thing, then we're going to lose and say we tried everything we, we yep. could to win. Well, you, yep. and actually, if you look at the you look at the stats in the first half, we only gained 33 yards on the ground. So why not try this? You might mm -hmm. get the ball. Your defense is, is keeping you in the ball game here well, for Line Mountain. Pitch back to Bailey. Going to try it around the outside. Gets a good block. Gets another block from Montgomery. First down, Red Tornadoes at the 45-yard line. A few line Mountain Eagles on their rear ends on that play, Warren. Yeah, that, and, and that time, they did the same thing. Their, their defense stayed the same. They blitzed that linebacker, came through the gap, only to play was, was moving away from him, and he, and he was out of the play right away. Yeah, Veach, Veach made an excellent block on the, on the uh, linebacker coming through and, and or to tackle, I guess, or whoever, and blew him back into the linebacker. <laughs> Drysenkovich off tackle to the 40-yard line, five-yard gain, second hey, down, five yards to go. I'll tell you what, I'd give the ball to Steve Sinkovich every time. If you know he's going to pick up five yards like that on a play like that, I'd give it to him every play. See, I, I think I think, it, <laughs> I think it's the key to, to this team is run the ball. And I think uh, we said that earlier in the, in the half. Make them adjust the way, uh, to you by running the ball right down their throat because that's where they seem to be vulnerable. Going to try Bailey off that same side. First down, Red Tornadoes at the 34-yard line. <clears throat> we changed a little bit of blocking schemes there, I think, on our tackles right there, Wet Warren, and that's what's helping. We're, we're knocking people out from the tackle side. Well, now, you know, now you're running over on, on this side uh, to the left. You know, you got Volkler over here, uh, who in, in the first half down there for the touchdown uh, Really did an excellent job on on his man, and and now you're running towards uh, Dalkus and Volkler over here, or putting some holes in the line. Gonna come that side again. John Veach finds running room to the 21 yard line. First down, Red Tornadoes. Well, they must have heard me, gang, because that's exactly what I just said. They they need to be a little sharper. They need to get off the ball, and that's exactly what they're doing here in the beginning the third quarter. And they're they're rocking Line Mountain back on their heels a little bit right now, and that's what we expected to see. I mean, they, they are a good offensive team. They were just kind of in, in a malaise a little bit in the first half. <laughs> That's what you guys missed last week. The words, wor words like that. The word of the week. <laughs> Hand off to Bailey. Off the left side. Five yards, seven yards. Still and on his feet. A oh, five-yard line. Great run off tackle. Good job by the left side of the Red Tornado offensive line. Over there was the tight end, which was Chris Cuff along with Dalkus and Volkler. And it, it, there's something that we haven't seen all season long. It, you know, everything, it seems uh, one run, one going to the left, and, and mostly everything in our playbook runs to the right. And now all of a sudden, here we've got Volkler and Dalkus, uh, Volkler and Cuff and... and uh, Power backfield with Malakoski in the backfield, and that stopped at about the three-yard line. Bailey did not get through there. And continuing that, Dalkus over on the left-hand side. Right, uh, sorry. Now moving the ball. No, that's fine. That's all right. The second down and goal to go from the four-yard line. And goal from three. 
Tries Veach off the left side, cuts it back, and he's in touchdown. for a touchdown. Good play by Veach that time. Good, Good run, run by Jonathan Veach. Great blocking by the Red Tornado offensive line. What, what Veach has learned over a period of 10, 11 games is now he knows exactly when to turn, put his head down, and drive his shoulder into somebody and, and, and get that yard. And that's, you've seen him progress so much over a period of a year that it's amazing. Steve, Mike Sinkovich in to attempt the extra point. Jonathan Else with the long snap. 21, Matt Montgomery, the holder. Snaps back, good, down, kicks away. And it's good. With 9.17 left in the third quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes 21, the Lion Mountain Eagles 2. What an impressive drive by the Red Tornado offense. Well, Big Red just emailed Lion Mountain and said, things are going to be a little different here in the, in the second half, guys. So, And that's, you know, that's exactly what we talked about in, in, in the, the halftime. And when you look at the statistics and you see what we had done in the first half, it wasn't anything to be real proud about, although we were up 14 to 2. So... This is the big red team we expected to see. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from Lion Mountain. I really aren't. But Lion Mountain was the fourth seed coming into this district. That's we right. are the top seed, and you're expected to beat the fourth seed when, when, when you're playing them. That's the way that it works here. Well, I'll tell you what. I, in that drive, I have to be impressed with the, the left side of the line there, starting with Jonathan Else, uh, moving over to uh, uh, Dan Dalkus, and then Jamie Volkler, and finally uh, Cuffey. Uh, the tight end over there, uh, who did not see too, too much action. But I'll tell you what, that was the whole series, except for one play, went to the left side. Big kick from Sinkovich into the win. Taken by Tressler on the nine-yard line. Breaks it outside and knocked out of bounds. 28. Okay, 20, 28. Initially Al Bailey, 26. <laughs> Uh, Lantini and Montgomery. 21, 21 Montgomery. Yeah, but you missed it. My main man, number eight, was having words there. Mikey oh, Michael Smith. Smith. Yeah. Was he after somebody? And he, and what I wanted to tell him was that you, you, want, you don't want to spot a guy 100 pounds. <laughs> he was picking on a big guy out there. Was it number 70? No, no, no. It was 50, 56, I think. 240. I think that's who he was, who he was jawboning with out there. <laughs> First down, Eagles from the 26-yard line. Twins right for the Eagles. They're going to throw to one of these two guys as Wenrick rolls. Looks at him cutting back across the middle. And uh, the receiver incomplete to Lenker at the middle of the field. But you saw that one coming, didn't you, Wayne? All, all the way. You know, they they throw that uh, twins all the way out to the right. that are only a yard away from each other. And our defensive backs did not come over and pick them up. And I think the second one did not come over and pick them up as close as maybe what he should have. Uh, if the two of them would have taken off straight down the field, uh, somebody would have definitely been open. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Eagles. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. Wenrick rolls to his left. Lots of time. Looks downfield on the long pass. Incomplete and flags on the play. I don't know what we're calling here. I don't know either. <clears throat> I'd say it's going against us. Where it's at, it's going to have to be wow. interference. Wow, interference, but that ball was long over everybody's head. Uh, yeah. it, it, he wasn't it wasn't a catchable ball. And Well, it was for the statistician for Lane Mountain. Right, he caught right. it about three, four yards out of bounds. Closer calls than that this season. Oh, definitely. That definitely. were left goal. Now, Lane Mountain goes with no huddle formation. They set up twins right. Twins right, first down and 10, the ball on the 41-yard line. Wenrick with Henninger, the lone back. Wenrick to Henninger, up the middle. Rusty Lashinsky and 54, Jeff Evans in on the stop after a two-yard gain. I'll tell you what, Rusty is keen on that man all, all the way, and he filled the hole so hard. And I'll tell you what, I haven't seen Rusty play this intense all season long. Uh, in the first half, you see him filling the holes very quickly and coming in and making some hard tackles. And, and here's the case here, straight, dry, straight dive. And, and you can tell he's keying on that lone halfback coming up through the hole in the guard position there and, and making good hit. Second down, seven yards to go for the Eagles. The ball on the 44-yard line. Wenrick rolls to his right. Malakoski with the big rush. Hits his receiver at the 40-yard line, 86, Daniels with the catch, and that's one of those twins coming out of that backfield, uh, Wayne, oh, or coming out of the 
from the slot position. <laughs> Excuse well, me, twins right. You know, we seen that play last week a little bit. If you remember, number 20 and 21 uh, were open in the, in the center of right. the field, and, and they're running a crossing pattern, and, and it's just a little delay curl to the inside, and he's hitting the seam. Good rush by Malakoski that time, Warren. Yeah, I mean, it, this quarterback is, is a pretty good quarterback. He really is. Yes, he is. We've seen some impressive quarterbacks this year. Mm -hmm. 7.44 left in the third quarter. Line Mountain on the 40-yard line. Fakes the pitch. Looks downfield in the corner of the end zone. Sebus there and is pushed. Interference all the way, and they do not call it. Unbelievable, Warren. These guys, yeah. these guys need to practice a little bit on the, on the uh, pass interference calls. Good job by Nick Sebus all the way that time. That was great defensive play by yes, Sebus. It really was. I, I got to give him credit there. He couldn't cover a receiver any better than he did. The receiver, what happened there was the receiver got nervous that he was going to intercept. Right. He knew that he wasn't getting to the ball. They gave Nick a push. And tried to do everything he could then to stop the interception. Second down, 10 yards to go. 7.31 left in the third quarter. The blitz is coming. Henninger going to his left side. Gets the pass away. Fumble, Fumble. on the play. Big hit by 47. Steve Zinkovich oh, recovered man. by the Red Tornadoes. Oh, folks, you heard that yeah. sucker come yeah. all the way up into the press box when he hit him. Oh. <laughs> when Rick completed the pass, we couldn't see the receiver from our angle here. And his number's now blown off. Anyway. <laughs> what a hit from Steve Sinkovich. His uniform wow. has no number on it right now. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Oh. What a hit. I'll tell you what, Mike Sink or Steve Sinkovich has, has done an excellent job from that linebacker backer position all seniors and long. Last week we seen him put a hit on number 20, and, and now tonight. First down, Red Tornadoes. Tried Bailey off the left side, and he gets about maybe one or two yard gain. They were blitzing everybody on that play. They had everybody up, yeah. outside linebackers, inside linebackers, everybody was in the line that play. Yeah, nothing else. You, you got to call them gamblers. I mean, they so play a wide open offense, a wide open defense where they're trying everything they know how. And, and you like it. I like that football. Right. I, I think that's neat football. And it's a lot easier when you're the fourth seed doing that gamble. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, you got nothing to lose here. You're, you're not picked to win the game. But in, in your own mind, you think you can. And that's what that's what's important. Is. Pitch outside to John Veach. Cuts it back up the middle. Finds running room at the 48. He's to the 30. And run out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. Nice play, Red Tornadoes. They set up split back. Yeah. A quick pitch yeah. out to Veach. Great pitch by Sebus. Good first down. And it caught line, line mountain on her heels that yes, time. They and, did. and that was that was a great call. Well, again, you know, they, they're their intent sort of looks like we're running up the middle, running up the middle, especially on the first series. You're, you're blocking up the middle and everything else. Uh, and, and, th and there is a good case there where, where uh, Warren, you had stated about John and Beach when to cut. He waited for that hole just to split open three yards off the line of scrimmage, and he blew right through it. I formation for the Red Tornadoes. Tries Sinkovich. Has a hole. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Wow. What a drive. Two-play drive. <laughs> touchdown. I'll tell you what. It's an easy one there. <laughs> you, talk, you talk about the left side of the line opening up. You know, there's John DeVeet sealing down, then you got uh, uh, Daukas and, and Volkler over there. Uh, in this second half, have just opened up some great holes. Unbelievable. 58, Mike Sinkovich in to attempt the extra point. Red Tornado's out of the shift. Snap back, it's good, it's down, the kick's up, Ooh. and it's off to the right. <laughs> Definitely had that one off to the, that one I called, he was off to the right. <laughs> he got underneath that too much is what happened there, Wayne. Well, you know what happened. If you, if you take a look, anytime you have someone coming in from either side, now there was a man coming in, the, the defensive end from, the, from our left was blitzing, and he did get in close, and what that does, and... With your peripheral vision, you pick him up right away. I don't have and, peripheral vision, by Oh, the way. don't you really? No, I, I never got any of that. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, us kickers, we had stuff yeah, you like had that. that. Okay, you know, yeah. and, you, and you always looked, and what you're doing is you're actually trying to protect yourself, and you adjust it slightly. Yeah. You know, and when you yeah. make that adjustment, instead of kicking through the normal uh, way you're, support, you're supposed to, those things happen. Yeah. He, he knew as soon as he, his, oh, yeah. he touched it that he was, that he was in trouble. 
Kicking off for the Red Tornadoes, number 58, Mike Sinkovich. But now, now, unfortunately, the game's gotten away from Line Mountain a little bit, and this is what we had talked about. Uh, now they're, you know, they're down a sizable amount. Kick taken by Tressler on about the 14-yard line. Find some running room. Mickey oh, Moreau's on Rose. his tail at about the 32-yard line, helped out by number eight, Mike Smith. Good play by Moreau's and Smith that time. And Smith's going to leave without taking on the Line Mountain bench now. He's decided to just come right <laughs> back over to ours now. <laughs> My main man there. 5.55 left in the third quarter. Wenrick goes with the Twins left this time. Henninger the lone back. Wenrick rolls to his left. Looks downfield. Caught by the coach on the <laughs> sideline. Nice catch. <laughs> Incomplete. If you look at them, as, as many coaches as they list, they're between head and assistant and then volunteer coaches, though. they got to be the, the best and most well-coached team there is. Got a lot of guys uh, giving their time in there to coach, and that's, for, that's what you like to see from the community, though. Co coach, our coach will never let me do it. I keep, I keep volunteering. He doesn't take me. He doesn't pick me. I don't understand what's going on here. I'm sending my name all the time. Second down, 10 yards to go. Wenrick, same roll to his left. Looks at the short man, incomplete, bounces around, third down and 10. Good coverage by Brian Detry that time. 58, now, Mike Sinkovich back into the lineup. This is, this is a, se a team that's, that, that really tests your secondary. You, you don't realize it until the game is over, and you look at how many times they've thrown the ball and the formations that they've thrown it out of, and they give your secondary and every play a test to see, make sure they know where they are and, and what it's going to look like. When, again, you get this trips formation coming out to the to the close side of the field to us. Wenrick going out of the shotgun formation on this play. Snaps back. He's going to run with the ball, and Malakoski has him for about a five-yard loss. That Flags on the far. play. Yeah, the flag on the play. I don't know what the call is here because uh, that was right at the snap of the ball. Now Malakoski that time showed me showed me a lot right there. He's they've been running that same play every time. What they do is they let him come up. The legal procedure. Motion. Yeah. They let him come up the field, and they're blocking and blocking, and then the quarterback cuts back around before him. That time he turned, he pivoted and turned around and ran right into him. He knew which way he was going to do it. He's, he, uh, he, one thing he's learned from that play as he's seen it go on tonight. Number 15, Kirby Snyder in punt formation. Snaps back. Kirby's got the ball, kicks away in the direction of Sebus. Bounces by him at the 40 and will be down at about the 37-yard line. That ball took a real bad bounce. Yeah. Looked like Nick was zeroing in on right, that. Right, right. He, he had it, it zeroed. If we get a bad picture during the game, it's my fault. I've bumped into the camera girl here about 22 times. Now. She's going to throw me out of the booth pretty soon. <laughs> we're, we're doing two cameras here because of, of the uh, threat of rain. We couldn't put one on the field. And I guess with my larger size, I'm not able to fit nearly as well as I used to next to this thing. But we, we've been poking and jabbing each other pretty good here now <laughs> since the beginning of the game. 5.15 left in the third quarter. First down and 10 red tornadoes. Veach goes in motion. Takes Veach off the right side. First down and more at the 49. Still on his feet. And more. And he'll gain more. He's down Step to up. the 20. Nice play. Still on his feet. Touchdown. Jonathan Veach, the Jet, turned two runs in Mr. here. Let me just say, stiff arm. Right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> the Jet. <laughs> that was not the only stiff arm. If you watch that play, when he got through the linebackers, one of the wow. linebackers yeah. went to make a tackle, and he stiffed armed him to get away from him also. Oh, what a great play by John. That oh, time. unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Good oh, block yeah. by uh, Jason Malakoski there, oh, too, at, at yeah. one point. I saw that, too. But again, the center of the Red Tornado line now just blowing things open. That was the opposite side. We we brought an off play up to the right side, Wayne. Well, you know, they're, they're in that play, they were looking at Sinkovich and exactly... Mike Sinkovich's kick is up and it's good. And what the, what happened there is if you, if you watch that play, Steve Sinkovich was the fake dive into the line. Right. And that froze the linebacker right. for the slashbacker. We used to call that the Sally, a Sally play. Inside Sally. Inside Sally, Sally. Inside Sally. Exactly. 
And um, boy, once you get Pat, once you freeze that linebacker and he's flat footed, he cannot do anything. Yeah, With 457 left in the third quarter, Red Tornadoes 34, Line Mountain Eagles 2. Stiff arm, though. I, no, you, you don't see that as much as you used to. And I'll tell you, every time you do, it's a thrill. It's, isn't it? He, he and, really did a job. I was impressed. <laughs> We're waiting to make sure you're going to be all right. <laughs> the old cold is catching up to me, Wayne. Well, well, stay out of, stay out of the, the wetness. Started last week. You know, right. if you wouldn't be in the wet marsh all the time, I guess. you'd be okay. Quack, 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 yeah. quack. <laughs> 58 mics in Kovic will kick off. Boy, he's booming some oh, tonight. tonight. Tressler takes it on the 16-yard line. Cuts back up to the middle of the field. Still on his feet. 58 Mike Sinkovic with the initial hit. Helped out by 88. Shellhammer. You know, Lime Mountain now, I mean, truly has to throw the ball. They have, they have little chance with 442 in the third quarter of winning the football game unless they put the ball deep a couple of times and get some quick scores on the board. Twins left. They went a lot to this formation. Trying heading her up the oh, middle, 47. Sinkovich with the hit fumble on the play. <laughs> he's, oh. just, he's just brutal, isn't, isn't he? he? Oh my goodness, you can watch him all night. <laughs> God, he, hits you and he rattles you when he, when he hits you. It's amazing when you can hear it with our earphones oh, yeah. on, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's so clear like that. I mean, oh my goodness, is he wacky. Second down, 11 yards to go. There, they're out of the... Trips left, twins right formation. Henninger, the lone back, the quarterback. Puts a man in motion. Fakes the handoff to him, looking downfield, and his receiver falls. Number 27, Caton Tressler fell. Quarterback took a good hit again that time. Then he shook a little yeah. bit. I, I didn't see who got him. Did you? Uh, he had, well, he had Malikowski, Malikowski. And, and I think Cuff was yeah. also okay. standing there. I mean, there, there are two guys right there. I'll tell you, there's a lot of weight and a lot of strength. And, and uh, you know, you get a quarterback rolling out lonesome like he was. He yeah. had nobody in front of him. Well, you're going to pay. Yeah, that's that's the first time I've seen him a little, a little bit shook from, from the whole game now. 3.50 on the clock. And Mal, I'll tell you what, Malikowski, Malikowski's put together a great football game, but he's done it really quietly. Yes, he has. You know what I mean? But he's really had a good football game here tonight. Third down, 11 yards to go. Wenrick, it's going to be a little screen. Malikowski all what the way. Move. What a move on put the 30-yard line. Did you see that move, yes. guys, at the line of scrimmage? It. Oh, that's a pro move there. He must have heard me talking about it. The old it. swim move. <laughs> yeah, the old swim it. move. Oh, excellent. <laughs> And that was a that looked like it was setting up to be a screen to the to the right. left side. That's exactly what the play was going to be. And and Jason was just in on the quarterback so quick. Kirby Snyder in punt formation for the Eagles. Montgomery and Sebas deep for the Red Tornado. Snaps back. Kicks away. Taken by Sebas on the 39-yard line. Brings it up the sideline and out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Three oh four left in the third quarter. First down and ten. Red tornadoes. The rain held off. Yeah, it did. I mean, we had such dire predictions for tonight, and and uh, it really turned out to be a pretty nice evening all all around. It did. Uh, weather wasn't too bad, cold wise or anything, and and the rain has has not rained the entire time we've uh, played football tonight. Number one, Mike Whitevich in a quarterback for the Red Tornadoes. Hands off to Sinkovic, tries off the right side, and that goes for no gain. Number 70 in on the tackle, Brian Wetzel for the Eagles. Pete Avellino now into the Red Tornado lineup, along with 67, uh, Jason Whitevich, 59, Aaron Geary. 
29 uh, parasol. Yeah, a lot of changes getting made now in the red tornado offense. Tries Bailey, fumble on the play, recovered by Lion Mountain. Number four recovered, uh, Levi Clock. First down, Eagles. Well, that, a lot of changes there in, the, in that, uh, in that, and uh, caused the fumble it was, it coming wasn't right a, through. A just, blitzing a it, linebacker. It wasn't a smooth handoff, and he and he never got the ball with enough time to tuck it away before he got hit. Just a tough play. And again, I told you, I like number four in defense from the beginning of the game. Clock. He uh, he's a good-looking football player, and he's played tough the whole night tonight. Two twenty-four left in the third quarter. Red Tornado defense back out on the field. Wenrick with the end around. The oh, <laughs> there was a Not defensive end, Chris Cuff, waiting all the way for that play. Not that time, folks. That was one time too many to the well. <laughs> one time too many. Did you see Cuff? He was. There was no way he was getting around Chris. No way. Look at the size of the loss oh. on that one, guys. That's. I didn't see Cuff, but I saw Tressler's eyeballs. Oh. <laughs> second in, I would say, second five since 17. Sounds good. I like it. I'm not really good when I'm forced to count in a hurry. Wenrick with trips left. You know he's going that way. Has a man cutting across the middle. Oh. Lashinsky with the hit after about a three-yard gain on number 32, oh. Sullivan. Oh. Oh. This, Lashinsky could have made the tackle on his own. But <laughs> figured, well, you know, he's up. What the heck? We'll finish him off, right? I'm already dirty. Yeah, I'm dirty. Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> I'll hit him anyway. <laughs> Twins left, third down, 13 yards to go. Rush time for the Red Tornado defensive line. Wenrick back to pass, quick drop. It's a long fly pattern, incomplete at the 15-yard line. Good coverage by 44, John Kalinowski. Flags on the play. And Sinkovich was calling that play. He was pointing over to Kalinowski the whole time before the play was run. Yeah. Almost as if to say... They're coming this way. That's where he's going. Holding call against the Eagles. That one will be declined probably. We'll make sure of that. The Eagles are, are self-destructing a little bit here now. It is declined. 51 seconds remaining in the third period. Fourth down for the Eagles. Number 15, Kirby Snyder in punt formation. Montgomery and Veach deep for the Red Tornadoes on this punt. Good snap. Kicks away. It's a wobbly one. Bounces in front of Montgomery. Picked up by Veach at the seven yard line. Still on his feet at the, gets back at the five and now finds some running room. Flip. And still on his feet. And look at Jonathan Veach go tonight. He's at the 30. And tackled at the 30-yard line. It's a clip, but what a nice run back by the Red Tornadoes. He's, he's having himself a heck of a Great night tonight. Great job, isn't he? Jonathan Veach. I'll tell you. The jet. It's going to come back. That's going to be an ugly penalty. They go far down the field. Yeah, this would be half be. the distance of the goal, yeah. so it'll be about the three-yard line. <laughs> it's going to be bad ugly down here for this one. And sometimes when, when you're shifting position that many times, it's, it's just going to happen. I mean, what can you do? I can't believe he found some running room up the sideline. Yeah, I don't know how I, he got I around him. I just cannot believe that. Yeah. It, it was, that was a great, I mean, for only being a 25-yard a, a run back, it, it was some great position. Yeah, no, that it was. He's, he's looked really well tonight. I have to say that for him. First down, Red Tornadoes deep in their own territory. Wytovich still in at quarterback. Hands the ball off to Bailey. Still on his feet to the nine-yard line. Nice run, close to a first. No. Oh, yeah. That'll be about a five-yard yeah, game, right? Yeah, about a five-yard right. game. Right. Okay. Like we're placing the ball down. A little, little, little more than five, but a long five. 
Two seconds left, winding down in the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, the Red Tornadoes 34, the Eagles from Line Mountain 2. Again, let us remind you, ladies and gentlemen, this is WKMC-TV, the broadcast arm of Mount Carmel Area High School, broadcasting you over a microwave signal, WLX-267. We are an instructional fixed television service. You catch us every Wednesday night during football season at 8 p.m. on Channel 13 on the service electric cable system. And as I reminded you earlier, we are now live at 7.30 in the morning. You can catch Mount Carmel Area High School news, get all the updates on what's happening in the district. If there's school, turn it on at 7.30 and you're going to hear it all live from WKMC-TV. It says that like Saturday Night Live, yeah, like, Sam Don please. like Sam Donaldson.